Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. I do a weekly television show called Team Chicago Challenge. My website is teamchicago.tv. Teamchicago.tv. As we overlook the Illinois River, we are in Marseille, Illinois. And uh, this location, the Middle East Conflict Wall, this is a wall that was put up. And to those that have died in the conflicts in the Middle East, going back to the Gulf War I, the Iraq, Afghanistan, and um, it was two motorcycle guys from Chicago that came up with this concept, and here it is. They got it done. And uh, it's an honor for me to be here. I'm going to show you some of the footage of the ride that we uh, went on from Grundy County Fair to here. And then the next 15, 20 minutes, I'm going to show you some of the highlights of the, the day, honoring those that gave their lives for our country to protect freedom. Freedom is the key. Freedom is why America is great. And don't forget my website, teamchicago.tv. If you want to contact me, it's teamdan45 at gmail.com. We have soldiers dying every day. We just had Memorial Day. That's for all the conflicts. So the world becomes a little poorer every day for every day a soldier dies. To him, he was just a common soldier, and indeed his ranks are growing thin, but his presence should remind us we may need his likes again. And it's not we may need his likes again, they're, they're out there in all kinds of conflicts. For when countries are in conflict, then we find the soldier's part is to clean up all the troubles that others start. If we cannot give him honor, while he is here to hear the praise, then at least let's give him homage at the ending of his days. Perhaps a simple notice in a paper that would say, our country is in mourning because a soldier passed away. And that's why we're here, because those guys that we're honoring today didn't pass away. They were killed in conflict, but soldiers die every day. So when you see a veteran and all you guys, thank you, God bless you for your service. Thank you for serving our country. God bless you all. So tell me about him. Uh, Don, Don Griffith Jr. He was born in uh, 1975 and went to Iraq. And um, he got killed over in uh, Telafar. It's kind of hard to talk about him because every day you miss him. I, I, I guess I'm not a good good spokesman, but uh, yeah, he's a, I'm senior and he was junior. So you've been coming here every year for? Oh, uh, well, this is the 16th year we've been, or uh, 17th year we've been here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He just left. All right, man. Hey, I like that crowd that's gathering over here. Cool. Come on, make some pictures with that walker over here. Come on, we want to show the support. Let him in front, the, the truck in the background, and salute that dude. Mr. Walker, you stand on the back pedal of your truck for the hitches, and all you better is give him a thumbs up. Somebody, uh, one of our volunteers over here assists Mr. Walker, so he's the highest point of that picture. He's got the white shirt on. Yeah, there you go, on the back, there you go. Make some noise, cheer him on, get him up there. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Everybody, come around. Okay, there's a cameraman over here. Everybody turn around and give him the thumbs up. Give him the thumbs up, there you go. There you go. Okay, I'm not a singer, but I'm going to say uh, to Mr. Walker, thank you for coming. Thank you for what you're doing. God bless you. On the count of three, we're going to do a little rock for you and your family. One, two, three. All right, young man. Hats off. Face the flag. It's all yours. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America 
and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Stay here, Andy. Do we have a dog tag for this young kid? Stay here, young man. As we head north out of the Grundy County Fair on 47, then we turned west on 52, and the rain started to fall, but it's a wonderful day for a motorcycle ride. I'm riding the Yamaha MT-07. This is a parallel twin, 689 cc's, four bales per cylinder, fuel injected, the good folks at Rich's Yamaha in Lockport, Illinois. Misty let me ride her personal bike. It only weighs 400 pounds and it feels great. What a great motorcycle to go on a ride. As we head into the town of Marseille, Illinois, it was approximately a 50 mile run from the Grundy County Fair. We head down this nice road into town. Hundreds of folks from Marseille come out on the highway to greet the riders. Approximately 1,000 bikes made the ride from Grundy County Fair to come to Marseille for the Middle East conflict Memorial Wall. I am honored to be invited to ride this event. I hope I can cover everything that happened properly. As you can see, hundreds of folks greeting the motorcyclists.
As I stand in front of this monument, many thoughts come through my head. The United States is not a warring country, but wars do come to our shores. In 1776, there were many Tories who considered themselves proper Englishmen. They did not want to separate from England. In 1805, when Thomas Jefferson sent a handful of Marines to Tripoli to end the conflict with the Barbary pirates, there were many people that opposed that move. In 1812, Madison stood up to England. They were capturing our sailors on the high seas. Fort Dearborn in Chicago was burned to the ground and that was part of the conflict in 1812 and not everybody in America supported that war. In 1845, when Texas joined the Union, the President of Mexico declared war on the United States. President Polk, to end the conflict, sent the Marines to Mexico City. In the peace treaty that followed, the United States bought with cash money the land north of the line from the Rio Grande to the Pacific Ocean. In 1860, when Abraham Lincoln was elected, one third of the country opposed him and America went to war with itself. The North prevailed and slavery was ended. In 1898, President McKinley opposed going to war with Spain, but Congress wanted to support the independence of Cuba. I am sure the folks in Puerto Rico and the Philippines are happy that we got involved with that 10-week war. In 1917, President Wilson sent two million troops to Europe to end that war. Many folks in the USA opposed that move. In 1941, even after the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, many in the US still wanted to keep the US out of the war in Europe. In 1950, when the North Koreans crossed the 38th parallel and attacked South Korea, the United States came to the aid of that country. I am sure the people in South Korea are very happy with what we did to help them, even though that war was opposed at home. In 1955, when the French pulled out of Vietnam, it was up to the United States to support the freedom-loving people in South Vietnam. America never lost a battle in Vietnam. It took the Democrats in the United States Congress to lose that war in 1975. And that brings us to the present day in the Middle East conflict. We're looking for the same thing with President Trump. He is probably the greatest, the man that we need, a man for all seasons, for this time that we are living in. But I also have to disagree with him. He says we should never get involved with the, the wars in the Middle East. He seems to forget the history. So if President Trump, if you get to see this on YouTube, I want you to understand, 3,000 Americans were murdered. We had to do something in the Middle East. And you gotta go back even before that, when we protected our ally, Kuwait, and sent troops in, and very little loss of life in that conflict. We had to go to, we had to go to war with Iraq. We definitely had to go to Afghanistan because that was where the Taliban and the, the troubles all started about 9-11. And George Bush, he had to do something with Saddam because he, he had peace agreements that they made at the end of Gulf War I, and uh, he was in violation of it. So I disagree with how we handled it because 
maybe we should have brought more education. After we became, after we freed the people of Iraq from Saddam, we should have educated them the benefits of America. Maybe we should have not set up a parliament, maybe we should have set up something more like America. There was, we're always afraid to educate these people when we free them up. The Iraqi people, the Iranian people, the people in the Middle East would be much better off if they had accepted our ideals of freedom. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, property rights, things that make America great, that's what we should have taught those people. Afghanistan's a perfect example. We do nothing to educate these people about the greatness of America. That's what America's got to do, and that's what Donald Trump is trying to do. But we had to go to war with, we had to go to Afghanistan, and it was honorable to go into Iraq and offer those people liberty and freedom from the oppression of Saddam. So it's one thing I disagree with President Trump, and I hope you see this message, and we can talk about it anytime you want. Yes, war is ugly. The mistakes we made in the Middle East conflict is that we failed to change the backward way of life of those folks in the Middle East. In Japan, we changed the attitude of the people in Japan and their lives have greatly improved. But we still keep 50,000 troops in Japan to watch them. We train the Germans and we keep 35,000 troops in Germany to keep an eye on them. South Korea, that is the big success story. We buy cars from South Korea, and there's 28,000 American troops to keep the peace. And now let's watch part of the ceremony at the wall in Marseille. Ladies and gentlemen, the Illinois Motorcycle Freedom Run, which puts all this together, I want to introduce you to the President, Ray Prokaski, and the Vice President, Mike Osterloh. Folks, welcome, welcome very much. Like, like Freak said, 17, 17 a.m. you're doing this, and a little bit of rain, never heard anywhere. We woke up. God gave us this beautiful stuff that makes it work. So, uh, enjoy your day. Um, God bless all our fallen. God bless all our gold star families. God bless everyone that came out here today to join us. With our national anthem, Tracy Grisenia. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the Oh, mm -hmm. 
Gentlemen, please retire the colors. Thank you. 